morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and we're here on Technique Tuesday. We had a little bit of an app malfunction and so that's why we're a little bit late. Thank the Lord, Jim is here because <laughs> he got us fixed and up and running again. So today we are going to be talking about double knitting. And first of all, I'm going to talk about what what is double knitting. So if you have never seen double knitting before, what it does is it creates a double thick fabric that is on this one it's black on the outside with your white decoration and this is a chrysanthemum i don't know if you can see that that it's a flower do you see the flowers pretty cool this is knit with chunky weight yarn and here's the other side of it do you see the flowers totally cute so it's completely reversible and what's neat is by doing the pattern you've actually interconnected the two fabrics together you cannot pull them apart they're actually knit together into a solid piece so how this is different from regular knitting if you wanted to make a double thick hat in regular knitting you would have a hat that fits inside of another hat like this hat would fit inside that hat but they're not connected in any way so double knitting actually connects your work together and so it's pretty cool but it is a little bit of an advanced project and so I like to use the three two one rule in other words anytime that I'm going to be doing a new skill say I'm going to be doing double knitting for the very first time I am going to take three projects in a row that I knit doing using the double knitting method and then for t number two no more than two new skills at a time so say for instance I'm doing double knitting and I've never done double knitting before that's one skill and maybe I am doing a provisional cast on and that is new to me as well that would be enough of new skills and so I would not pick a double knit project that had decreasing while I'm doing color work. I would make it as simple as possible. And then number one rule of our three, two, one rule is make sure you knit one hour daily. And I know some people say, I can't possibly do that. But you know, when you learn how to golf or you learn how to horseback ride, they have you ride every single day. And if you're not riding at least uh, five to six days a week when you're in training with your horse um, they will say that you're sloughing off <laughs> so when we're knitting we don't want to slough off so we make time if it means you get up an hour earlier then you get up an hour earlier and you do your knitting so that you can learn the new skill <laughs> so what were you gonna say Jim oh and tell them what time you got me up this morning yay actually we slept in today we slept in till 4 20 didn't we yeah, 4 30. oh 4 30. yeah i never sleep in until 4 30. i'm usually up at like 3 45 or 4 at the very latest and this morning i was just sleep sleeping away i guess i was being kind of lazy for me you let me slack off a little <laughs> all the way till 4 30. yeah yeah so anyways I've always been a morning time person and there's no way that I can sleep in. I mean, even when I'm sick, I don't usually sleep in. If I sleep in until five, I'm not feeling well because my body just works that way. I get up early. So now- Oh, so I, Debbie doctor says she wishes she could only knit one hour a day for her. It's more like six to seven hours a day. Me too, I'm right there with you. I knit every day. What I do is I'll knit for a few hours and when my hands need a break and I'm like, oh, I need to give my hands a break. Then I'll do housework, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll make lunch for us. Or yesterday I was outside washing windows really quick. The whole outside of the house, I washed all the windows because the cold, there's a cold front moving in. And as soon as it gets below 32 degrees, guess what? The window, the liquid doesn't work well. It sprays onto the window and then it freezes. <laughs> And you can't clean it so because I don't like having dirty windows I like to wait till the last possible second that I can and make sure once again I scrub those windows so they're nice and clean right Jim mm -hmm. so I was doing that yesterday and I had a, my big old ladder out going all the way around the house so that was pretty cool but back to our double knitting oh can you guys do me a big favor if you have buddies that want to learn how to double knit or they're interested in learning new skills share with them so that they can learn too and you push that like 
like button, right, Jim? The share button. The, is this, where is the share button? It's in the bottom. Located? It's yeah. at the bottom. I'm not really a computer person. Thank goodness I have a hubby who is great at that stuff. <laughs> because I barely answer my emails. And that's how I get all the work and all the knitting and everything done that I need to get done. Is that I stay fairly offline, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, anyways, but, but you I do, do get try on... to manage the VIP group yeah. and visit and see what's going on there. But as a rule, I like to be um, in person with people. So, but because I can't be in person with all of you, I am online. <laughs> so, and I do enjoy that. I love sharing with people and I love learning new things. So, this really is kind of my weekly treat. So, it's, to it's totally fantastic. But I love double knitting and let me show you how I learned right so I said oh I want to double knit and I figured out that it is that fabric that doesn't come apart and it's super super thick I wish I could let you feel this this is 100% baby alpaca and it's double thick and you can roll the brim over and it is such a cute hat and what I did is online I have this chrysanthemum hat pattern and it's actually using fingering weight yarn and it's using this invisible cast on and if you look at my cast on here it looks pretty darn nice that's a pretty cool cast on but let me tell you it is not easy so on your first project when you do double knitting I like to first of all do a project that's in the round and so why do I say in the round versus flat let me tell you why when you're knitting a flat piece like this scarf when you're double knitting this is not a double knit this is just cable I'm just saying for instance if you were making a scarf in double knitting you have to deal with the edges in other words what I mean by that is you have to close up the edges so that the double knit fabric is sealed shut much like the edge of this hat and that involves a little extra work so what I don't recommend doing a flat project for your first project I think knitting in the round if you're comfortable knitting in the round it's the best way to go because you don't have to deal with edges you're just knitting around and around in a circle so the first project that I did was by Cascade Yarns and this is called the Eco Highland Duo Scandinavian Double Knit Hat and it is knit with a worsted weight Cascades worsted weight pure alpaca and I use the Eco colorways two different colors a gray and an off-white that's the Eco alpaca yes mm -hmm. and it, it's really nice yarn and pure alpaca is really nice too it's 100% baby alpaca but you'll look on my edge here do you see what's different? I used a garter stitch edge for this pattern. Avoiding this whole fiasco, very difficult part, which is casting on, doing the invisible cast on it. It's not the cast on itself that's difficult. It's beginning to knit it because it likes to spin in circles. Not easy to do. So I did my first project in this pattern. Now. If you look at this, show them really close up front. Mm -hmm. And then I have my top here. I changed the top to the kind of decreases that I like to have for the top of my hat. And if you look at her pattern here, you see that there's two patterns, a front pattern and a back pattern. First thing I did is got rid of the back pattern. I figured I will do just the front pattern. And then by doing the front pattern, I have eliminated half of my problems, so it's easier for me to learn. So when I did my hat, I had never done double knit before. So I did the garter stitch edge, and it has you increase. You like knit a stitch and increase a stitch, knit a stitch, increase a stitch. So it doubles your stitch count, i.e. double knitting. Double knitting requires double the stitches. That's why it's so slow. Every round is the equivalent of two rounds because you're actually knitting two hats at once. Pretty cool, huh? But it makes it nice and thick. So what I did is I needed to learn, when you double knit, you have to bring your yarns in the back, yarns in the front, yarns in the back, yarns in the front. So I did that from here to here. And then I said, okay, I'm used to managing the yarns now. Now I will begin my chart. 
So then I did the chart for a couple repeats. And before I did the, crease, de the decreases at the top, I went back to just solid color knitting so that I could learn how to do decreases in double knitting without having to mess with color work. So that's how I did mine. And it made it really easy for me to do by dumbing it down and making it easier for myself, I was able to learn double knitting very quickly and enjoy it. You know, a lot of people will try and do these new skills and it's too many new skills at once. And they, they'll do this really difficult cast on edge and they'll never be able to cast on. So if you can't cast on or the cast on looks terrible, you're gonna be, you know, um, aggravated, irritated, or just give up altogether. And we don't want that. When we're knitting, we want to have fun. So we all know how to do garter stitch, which is knit a row and purl a row when you're in the round, right? So that was totally cool. I could do that. So that's how I did my first project. Then the next project that I did was a pair of mittens. And it just had a, a simple thumb gusset and then I did simple decreases at the top and I don't have those here with me because I gave them away. The thing about those mittens were it was super easy and again I did a I, I think I just did a regular border where you would do a provisional cast on. I didn't do this new cast on way that I'm going to show you today and let me show you on this pair of double knit mittens. I'm working on this sample here and I was almost thinking that I was gonna take it out because it feels too thick. Do you see it? Like it's almost a half an inch thick. Well, you could go into a blizzard with this and still be fine. This right here is a pattern that I made up myself. Yes, Jim? Just so they can see it, yeah. Okay. And I'm doing increases for the thumb <coughs> gusset and you can see I'm almost done with my thumb. But you see how thick the fabric is, super, super thick. And I showed it to Tara, who works here. And she said, oh, you should finish them. It's so cool. And um, so I may, I may just do that. <laughs> so we'll see how that works out. But for you can see that this mitten project, I'm doing two at a time in the round. And it's doing double knitting. So I do not recommend that for your first project. Doing a hat where you're just doing on a 16 inch needle, a small needle around is easier than managing the magic loop method. So for me, I can do magic loop in my sleep. It doesn't bug me and I have no problem with that. But if it was a new skill for me, I definitely wouldn't want to do the cast on, the double knitting and two at a time in the round for my first project. So, um, as we're going along, don't forget to let us know where you're from. Maybe you can show us what you're working on or you can tell us what you're working on. Don't forget to give us the name of the pattern because we get so excited about these new patterns. And guess what? Then we want to make it, but if we don't know the name of it, we can't enjoy it along with you. So I'm gonna stop this for just one second and I'm gonna talk about our prizes, right Jim? Mm -hmm. So this last week was for a lovely skein of this Ultra Alpaca Chunky by Barocco and it's 50% Peruvian Highland wool and 50% baby, oh no, it's not baby. It's actually super fine alpaca, which is still a high quality, but it doesn't have the price point that the baby alpaca would have. So this makes a fantastic yarn for hats, mittens, anything like that. It's durable because it has the durability of the wool and it has the warmth of the alpaca. Match made in heaven. I use this ultra alpaca all the time. <laughs> I have lots of it at home. And so for this week, I was thinking for the prize, we might use this lovely sueno. And this is by Haiku or Scassel. And what it is, let me read the back to you. It's 80% superwash, meaning when you hear superwash, that means that it is machine washable. The wool is actually treated to be machine washable. And then it's 20% viscous, and viscous is from bamboo. So the 80-20 blend of bamboo and merino is a wonderful blend. Now what I love about this yarn is that it has a nice tight twist on it. So what that means for you 
And this particular DK, it has a huge range of needles. Um, you can go all the way from a number three needle all the way up to a number seven needle on this DK. And I have used um, this Sueno for almost that entire range, maybe exactly that entire range. And it's beautiful no matter what you do with it. So what I love about it is because it has the tight, tight twist, it gives it the durability and the longevity that you might not get from those loosely plied yarns. And this one, this yarn has no itch. So if you're doing a sweater out of this yarn, which I think is the ideal sweater yarn, it may be a little tiny bit on the expensive side. Although it's not expensive compared to the hand dyed yarns, and it is, it washes up great. I put it in my wash machine and dryer and had it come out fine. Although, for the most part, I don't like to take my um, projects that I spend a ton of time on them and throw them in the dryer too much, right Jim? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to wear them out because I spent five zillion hours making the thing. And guess what? I don't want it to get ruined. So I rescue it from the dryer and let it dry on the blanket bar at home or maybe in the spare bathroom on the sink. Whatever. But this is a great yarn. If you haven't tried it before, please do try it if you need it for, well, this yarn's good for anything. But uh, it has absolutely no itch. It has a great price point. I mean, um, the, the yardage on it is 255 yards. It seems that when I did my brioche hat out of it, I made three different hats, two different sets of booties, and I was still working on those two skeins for brioche and I still had some left over. I think I still have some left over at home from those two skeins. So this yardage seems to go on and on and um, it's a great yarn. Oh, let me tell you about how you win, okay? So we're gonna be choosing between the manatee colorway or this one is called Lavender Field. It's a green um, and purple maybe. So, so it's you can see. kind of like a teal green oh, teal. and then a purple. So you guys help me choose. Can you guys vote on that? And then we will, can you see the back of it, Jim, mm -hmm. so they can see the colors? Mm -hmm. And maybe you can tell me what your favorite one is. And then next week, we choose the winner, and then that person will get this yarn in the mail. And we, all we ask is that they give us their shipping address. And the way you enter to win, right? You know those comments we were talking about? <laughs> you post comments in the comment section. Share with your friends. Talk about whatever it is that your heart desires. And then you're entered to win. <laughs> and so it's pretty easy to win on these um, daily, or excuse me, weekly prizes. So it's so, so much fun. Also, Jim wanted me to mention to you, because it's so cold everywhere, and not everyone likes to knit socks, these are called our boot socks. Extreme winter boot socks. Extreme winter boot socks. And these are my favorite socks, and let me show you why. If I open this up, I'll show it to you. It's pretty cool. Do you see, first of all, it almost reminds me of my double knit hat. Do you see how thick it is? These puppies are warm, and I'll show you how nice they look on the inside. Do you, they stay up, they have great, and do you see how they have that full terry throughout the whole sock? So you can stay nice and warm. And they are machine washable. Now, when we're talking about our alpaca socks, the things that you wanna remember is that the alpaca is a little more fragile fiber. And this is an investment. So don't take your alpaca socks and kill them in the dryer. What I do at home is I wash them in the wash machine, then I take them out and I throw them in my laundry hamper. And by the time I need to wear them, they're dry. And once again, I can use the blanket bar. The poor blanket bar is used to dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice having a blanket. If you don't have a blanket bar in your room, you need one. <laughs> Either that or a drying rack somewhere. And I don't have a drying rack, so the blanket bar is my drying rack. And we also have these. And what are these called, Jim? These are the Rainier, Rainiers, but they're kind of your new second favorites. <laughs> these are Rainier, and these, look how tall they are. So this one is actually a medium size. Look how long it is. It almost, the small size on me almost goes all the way up to my knee. And they almost looked a little bit big, but when I put them on, I didn't have a problem with them. They're more like a slouchy sock that you can put inside your boot. Um, they may not stay um, all the way up because my legs aren't huge, but they keep, they're like a hug around your leg. 
And so if you're cold like me all the time, these are fantastic, huh, honey? Mm -hmm. And so those are our new socks. So if you haven't tried those yet, those are another product that you might want to try. So back to our double knitting. So we follow the three, two, one rule and we do the Cascade Highland Duo Scandinavian Double Knit Hat, which can be found on the Cascades website. And if you type in that Scandinavian Double Knit Hat, it'll come up so you can just print out copy and give it a go. Making sure that you learn how to move the yarns back and forth by just doing the regular uh, stranding and then pick up the pattern later on. And of course, I did not do my decreases in the pattern because that would have been too much for me to learn at one time. And I did have fun through the whole project and I think it took me a couple days to do it and I really enjoyed it. We're going to do a blog so, on this so we'll have links as well so they can oh, we'll, we'll to, so that will awesome. help you have them. Yeah, so when I am doing uh, when I was learning double knit, I found the hardest part of double knitting was learning how to do the invisible cast on and it wasn't the invisible cast on that's the problem. So if you look at my double knit cast on, here's a little sample that I have here. And you can see it's see is the minute it gets off the cord it starts spinning in circles. And once it starts doing that spinning, you can't get it straight again. It does not look good no matter how you do it. So that was my problem. But I did find that if I um, used double points, you know, I usually use double points for cable needles, but I happen to have some double points. And so I cast on using double points and that did make it easier. And so also, um, I'm trying to show you here. So this, Can I come around let's and do see it? here. One second here. I'm trying to pick up to see if I can figure out how to show you. You want me to come around this way? Yeah. Okay. Oh dear. Once you let go of it, it's kind of hard to pick it up and work on it again. But I'll see if I can do it. Now, in my top index finger, what you need to do is, in, with my index finger, you would carry your main color. And the way that you do this cast on is you come up, it kind of looks like the long tail cast on, right? So that is the orange, and then you need a strand of the green. You go from behind all the way up and into the center and then there you have your green. So you see this cast on is not very difficult. So let me just stop talking for one second and see if I can just show you a couple pairs of cast on stitches so you can see what they look like. And that is how you do that invisible cast on. And like I said, the cast on itself is not that difficult. Let's go through the front and grab it just like a long tail. Very similar to the long tail. Long tail, you would come over here, but you would just, you just go right here. And then you come around the back and then grab your green. So that is how you cast on using the cast on. And like I said, um, this is not a great cast on to start in the beginning. It's after you've done a few projects that you can cast on okay. using that project. Now. I found, when I was looking and doing research, I found this fantastic cast on here. And this is called my cross hat, and I'm just making it up as I'm going. And it's using the Sueno DK and the tonal colorway with the Ice Ice Baby colorway. And this color is Manatee. And I have just a simple cross pattern, and you can see it's a 10 stitch repeat. And when you're doing double knitting, you want to use stitch markers because if you have to go backwards, it's double the work to go backward, right? So I have them here. And then I have separated this on two 16 inches, but when I'm knitting it, I'm doing it on one 16 inch. I just wanted to be able to show you the pattern. But the important part about this is the brim. You see it's one by one ribbing. And let me turn the hat the other way. Do you see with normal provisional cast on and you have your ribbing, you would have a ridge here, but this ribbing doesn't. Isn't that cool? So I wanted to show you how to do this. Okay, let me come back over one more time so I can show you. And it, I have a tiniest of tiny samples here and I've already started on them. So I have 
So what are you showing again here? This is this right here. So this one by one ribbing, mm -hmm. you would cast on using a provisional cast on, and then you would do your ribbing however long you wanted. I did mine for three inches, and then you join it. And I'm showing them how they join it so that the back of it looks as nice as the front and there's no garter stitch edge that you would normally see on this type of a brim. So I've already started, I've done one stitch in silver, one in orange, one in silver, one in orange, one in silver, one in orange, one in silver. So this, this front needle right here is my regular knitting and you see I folded it in half and this is my provisional cast on that I had that I put onto a spare needle and it's kind of awkward to join so I will show you this so I've already done the knit stitch now I need to do a purl stitch so I would bring both yarns to the front and my purl is going to be in the orange color and it is using my back needle which is provisional cast on needle so that is a purl stitch and then you flip both yarns to the back and then I'm going to be doing a knit stitch then you flip both strands of yarn to the front and what you're doing is your the yarns are trapped in the center of your work so they don't show on the outside of your work and then you have, I'm starting my stockinette, which is going to grow, which is going to be this section right here. Okay? So it's in stockinette. In order to make stockinette and double knitting, one stitch needs to be a knit stitch and the other stitch needs to be a purl stitch. So this next one, I'm going to be doing my main color, which is the gray. That's a knit stitch. And I had both the yarns in the back. Oops. One second, that wasn't right because I had just done a gray stitch. So now I have the gray, that's the knit stitch. So I need to move both of the yarns to the front and do a purl stitch. And you see, you kind of have to do it between the two needles. And it is a little fiddly, but it I think I feel like this, if you're, if, if I had more stitches, it's not as funky. If um, it's because I have a very small sample here and so I'm working in a very small space which makes it a little harder so then I have my gray yarn then I move them both to the front and I insert that needle in so I can do a purl stitch and move that gray out of the way so you got to go around one second here Oh, I can catch this here. Oops. There you go. Pearl. And you can see how it's a little bit fiddly with this small amount of stitches. And then I'm going to the front, back to the front, and doing a knit stitch. And then put them both. And this one, then they weren't separated evenly, so Actually, it looks like they are separated evenly. So this one, I'll put this, that's gonna be a purl stitch, and you gotta move your yarns out of your way. When I'm doing double knitting, I knit the main color in my right hand and the contrasting color in my left hand, which makes it pretty nice. Oops, see how that gray yarn almost got trapped in the front? And then that goes there. And I'll show you when I get this last stitch done. And I'm halfway done with the thing, so I can only show it half joined, but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. So this one's a purl stitch. Okay, now let's take a look and see what it's looking like. Here's your ribbing. That's what the front looks like. And you see that's what the back looks like. And what it did is it's joined the one by one ribbing together while at the same time setting it up for your double knitting, which requires pairs of stitches. One gray, one orange, one gray, one orange. So if we look here, we have one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight pairs of stitches. And it's perfectly joined, so it's completely reversible on both sides. So this type of a cast on, which is to do a provisional cast on, do three inches of one by one ribbing or two by two ribbing or whatever you want, and then join it doing knitting one stitch from the front needle with one color and then one stitch from your back needle or provisional cast on to make that set it up for double knitting i thought it was so cool when i saw that it's like ah oh, that i gotta show everyone that because it really is cool and having your brim so it looks beautiful on both sides and it does not have that garter ridge there i'm like how did they do that I want to learn how to do that. That's so cool. So if, if there are some of you out there that haven't tried it and you've actually done a double knitting project, try and use this brim because it is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> and it's completely reversible. So that's totally awesome. So. Hey, Kel. Yes. So what you're saying, though, is that even people who are beginning should try this instead of trying to do that the first one. Is that what you're saying? I think that... Um, Anyone who is, yes, you could do that kind of a cast on. If you're used to doing a provisional cast on, for heaven's sakes, this kind of cast on looks much fancier than just regular garter stitch. Matter of fact, you could use this Eco Highland Duo pattern and do this kind of an edge and get a really cute edge instead of just this little plain garter stitch. It's totally up to you, whatever works. But I saw that and went, I have never seen that done before. So that's why I wanted to share it with you. So, um, yeah, that's totally cool. And also this chrysanthemum pattern is normally done in fingering weight yarn. And I, the first thing that I did to myself is said, I want to do this chrysanthemum pattern, but I don't want it to be too difficult to do or have it... Um, uh, it take me too long to be able to do it. So I said, I, I had this 100% uh, baby chunky alpaca that I was testing, and then I had my regular Plymouth uh, chunky alpaca. And so I put those together and said, if I was gonna do my chunky weight hats, how many stitches do I usually cast on? Well, on this chunky weight, I usually cast on about 60 stitches or so, and so if you look at this chrysanthemum hat pattern, it is a 28 stitch repeat. And so I had 56 stitches that I could work with. Either that, or it would be more like 80 stitches, which would be too much, right? If I did three repeats, it would be too much. So what I did instead is I did the two repeats and I used a larger needle. <laughs> <laughs> to make up the difference. And also, if you look at this pattern, even if you do decide to do it in fingering, make sure you highlight these repeats with the highlighter. That made it so much easier to keep track of because these flowers have no repeatable pattern. In other words, every section is a different repeat. So it's nothing that you can really memorize. You actually have to be following the chart. Now you say, how could I tell where to start? What I was looking for when I'm looking at this chart is this is the beginning of a flower. So I wanted to keep most of that flower into place. And I started knitting with the two repeats on the larger needle and went, that's gonna work. I'm measuring it as I went. And then I took my tape measure and said, how many stitches per inch? Well, it was roughly right, um, it was this section, one, two, three, four, five. Each one of these marks was approximately an inch. And if I'm gonna do a fold over brim, I know that when I knit my hats, I usually start the decreases for the top of the head at least at around seven inches. So if I look here, if this is approximately one inch, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more inch which is fine for me because I knew I was gonna do a fold over brim. So that is how I calculated where to knit my chart. So when I did the chunky weight project, I did it from, on this chrysanthemum chart, number 36, that's where I started. And then I knit all the way up until I got up to 74 and then I started doing my decreases. So that's how I knew how to do the chunky weight. All right. So for today, we have our um, Ultra Alpaca Chunky, and let's see who our winner is. Uh, it is Karen. Uh-oh, how, how do you spell 
do you pronounce the last name? I don't know. Um, it's D U P L A N T I S. Duplantis. I think so. Oh, I might be cursed by that. I'm terrible. <laughs> Anyways, Karen, congratulations! You have won. And all you have to do is give us your address. And this was the colorway that our fellow knitters chose. So, and or crocheters, whoever's. What's it called? Um, color? It's called Ultra Alpaca Chunky. Okay. And this is by Baraco. And this is one of my staple yarns that I love so much because you have the durability of the wool and the warmth of the alpaca. And the price point is lovely. So, if you haven't tried Ultra Alpaca Chunky, I venture to say you would love it if you did try it. And the price point is fantastic for what it is. And it comes in some beautiful colored, kind of heathered colored waist. So if you haven't tried this yarn, give it a try. We have it in different weights. And it is, we have it all the way down to fingering weight, right? Mm -hmm. And um, don't forget, when you're learning a new skill, we have the three, two, one project, or uh, rule, three, two, one rule. And the number three stands for three projects in a row. Number two is no more than two new skills at a time. And number one, practice for one hour daily. And that's the rule that I follow to be able to learn new skills. That's how I've learned so quickly. So I hope that you guys have a great week. Next week we are gonna be talking about, are we gonna, we're gonna be talking either about a quick um, shawl or a scarf for the Christmas season, or we are going to be talking about fixing mistakes. Why don't you guys vote and let me know what you like. Would you like to learn how to fix mistakes and double knitting? Maybe, um, what else can I do? Oh, simple increases or decreases than double knitting. Maybe we can cast on together and I can show you how to join in the round and actually get started on double knitting. You guys let me know. If not, if you're like sick of this and you wanna go on to a new topic and you would like to talk about as how you can knit your own super simple scarf for Christmas gifts and not have to um, worry about buying a pattern, let me know. I can give you a little recipe that you can use to knit your own scarves for Christmas gifts and not have to buy patterns. So vote, let me know, and then whatever wins is what I'll talk about next week. That'd be great. That sounds good to me. And don't forget, when you're learning how to double knit, learn to try the knitting in the round first. A hat is a perfect project for double knitting. And then try to do just either a garter stitch edge or the one by one ribbing edge that we talked about today. And if and learn how to move the yarns back and forward. Um, that's great. And it also helps when you're doing double knitting. If you have color work experience, double knitting is color work. And so it's just a little more advanced than color work. <laughs> so if you like that double thick knit hat that will keep you warm in any kind of weather, um, you can learn to double knit and make it and you would enjoy it. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next Tuesday. Take care.